Morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to do a review of this. This is the Ordinary Mineral UV Filters SPF 30 with antioxidants. I think this is the only one out to buy at the moment. There may be the SPF 15 of the same type, um, but they've got a quite they've got quite a big range that's going to be available soon, I hope. Um, there's a couple of other ones that I would like to try and will be reviewing for you. And we've been waiting quite a while, haven't we? I've certainly been checking it for months and months and months. Um, so this one is in a 50 mil tube. Um, I like the packaging, I like their tubes. I'm glad that it's 50 mil, not 30 mil. I think a lot of their tubes are 30 mil. And this one is £8.90, so I'm really happy with the price. It is an untinted, I thought it was gonna be tinted actually, when I saw the packaging to me that suggests tinted I, otherwise I would have expected it in a white packaging but it is an untinted sun protection cream this is an SPF 30 it is um, not water resistant and it is broad spectrum or full spec full spectrum it doesn't say on it that it is full spectrum or bro broad spectrum and in fact i noticed on their facebook page somebody had asked if it was broad spectrum and they had asked them to dm them and i'm not sure why because it is a zinc oxide and titanium dioxide based product which means that it's full spectrum um so i'm not sure what the confusion is there but to my knowledge in sunscreens and thus far in life if it has those ingredients in it is full spectrum and it's not like those ingredients are far down the list um there's water silicone and then zinc oxide and titanium dioxide so they are the basis of this sun protection let's talk about their claims then so they say that it is an antioxidant anti-irritant and hydrating as well as being a sun protecting product so antioxidant yes it is an antioxidant on top of being a sun protecting product because it has flavanones in it and so those flavanones will protect your skin from environmental um damage such as bacteria um allergens smoke dust that kind of thing um an anti-irritant it has anti-irritant products in it such as pepperberry is an anti is a soothing property, is a soothing product. But I don't know what they mean by the anti-irritant properties. I don't know whether the purpose is to soothe from sun damage, you know, from or from heat rash, or whether it means that it's good for sensitive skin. I wish they'd have elaborated a little bit more on, on that side of things. Um, and then hydrating, and it's it's hydrating ingredients there's a lot actually there's a lot of um, lipids in here there's sodium hyaluronate in here so I would say yes it's definitely got hydrating ingredients in here and I'll tell you how hydrating or otherwise I found it I'm not reading from the Desiem website because I feel like as as with a lot of the descriptions there's a lot of unnecessary words and an, a lot of unnecessary techno speak there um, but what I think you should know is that it does have silicones and I know that some people are unhappy about it having silicones. I have no issue with that and didn't feel in any way about it. Some products with silicones, I don't like the feeling of it, but with this, it doesn't feel like it's got silicones in it to me. It doesn't feel that kind of greasy texture at all to me. Um, it doesn't have any nanoparticles in it. And again, I know that that would be really important to some people. Um, They've listed it as being non-comedogenic, which to me is a questionable term and I'm surprised that they use it. I could do a whole video on that, but if, if you know anything about it, it's a term that doesn't really mean anything because even if you, even if you never use anything that is comedogenic, you never use any products, you can still end up with blocked, blocked pores, basically. Um, but you could use everything that is comatogenic and not get blocked pores so to me it's not it's not something that really will is that helpful i wonder if it may be because some people feel that silicones break them out however silicones are considered non-comatogenic but that's the point different things can break different people out um but i wonder if that's why they've put that in there um my questions about this product i have two kind of major questions one is i'm really unsure why they haven't labeled it as broad spectrum or full spectrum um, and and specifically why when somebody asked it on facebook they didn't just say yes it's full spectrum because like i said it's zinc oxide and titanium dioxide so therefore it's broad spectrum 
as far as I'm aware. Um, and the second question is their directions say to wait 15 to 20 minutes after application before going in the sun. But that is an instruction that applies to chemical sunscreens, not to zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Um, mineral sunscreens are effective immediately. Um, and I don't know whether maybe that's just the person that puts the wording on the website. Maybe that's wrong because there was one incident where it was said you couldn't use a product twice a day and I did a review I can't remember what it was maybe the azelaic acid or something like that and I had read the directions on the website done a review and then I had so many comments saying that it doesn't say that on the website it doesn't say that on, on the website and I went back and had a look and sure enough it didn't say it and I thought I was going crazy but I got in touch with um Decium and they said no you're right it did say that for the first few days but then we changed it because it was wrong so I wonder if that's just an error and that will be changed in due course or whether it's something to do with I I, I, I really don't know whether because they feel that it's diluted but there's many other mineral sunscreens on the market that have lots of other ingredients in them but mineral based sunscreens are effective immediately Again, to my knowledge it doesn't matter if they're nanoparticles or not um yeah so i'm puzzled by that but maybe maybe there's information that is new that i just haven't caught up with yet so um that's just a question that's i'm just curious about that and you know if i was really that curious i could get in touch with them and wait for an answer but um, i have got in touch with them before and I wanted to get this video to you quicker than I would get an answer from them. Um, okay, on to my experience with it. So I will show you my self applying it this morning, but I also used it yesterday morning. And my first impressions when using it were that I loved it. I loved the way it feels going on. It doesn't feel thick and greasy to me at all. It's the first product that I was kind of laughing because I thought, maybe I've finally got a product that people won't tell me I'm using too much because you, I think you're supposed to use a teaspoon for your face, aren't you? I don't know whether that's face or neck, but I thought maybe finally I have a product that people won't be getting on at me that you're using too much. Um, but when you first put it on, you do go, oh goodness, it's really white. But as you'll see from me putting it on, it very quickly disappears. It very quickly rubs in and it doesn't take much for the white cast to go away. You don't need to be rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, you know. Um, it was a couple of minutes and it was completely gone. There was no residue. It didn't feel like my skin wasn't left feeling sticky or greasy. Um, it wasn't completely matte, but it wasn't in any way, you know, oily or that horrible sunscreen feeling of many years ago you know to me it just felt like i had put on a really good moisturizer it didn't feel like i put on even a rich cream it just felt like i put on a really good moisturizer not a mattifying moisturizer just a good moisturizer for dry skin that wasn't particularly rich but just something that had a, was a good base for makeup i was happy putting my foundation on happier than i was using um I bought an Avene SPF 50 from Boots and used that on top of my EUK and that felt really greasy and like as if I put, as if when I put my foundation on and it was gonna slide around. But with this, I felt quite confident that when I put my foundation on, it was gonna go on well and it did. It really went on absolutely fine and I didn't feel like I needed to wait for anything to sink in. It was absolutely fine. Now I know that I'm a bit of an odd one out in that most people I think use a moisturizer in the morning and then an SPF. But because I always wanted to encourage myself to use an SPF every single day, I wanted that to be one step, a moisturizer with an SPF. And so I've always looked for a moisturizer that is oil free with an SPF in it. And it's been a difficult thing to find actually over the years, but when, once I found one, I have stuck to it. And the one that I found, I remember that was oil free and my kind of holy grail early on was a Dermalogica one that was oil free and it was a high SPF, high at the time was SPF 25. Um, and I didn't need much moisture I didn't need much hydration because I had very, very oily skin that never got dry and never got dehydrated. Um, 
And so I know I'm the odd one out because I never use a moisturizer before my SPF. Even now that I've got dry skin, I've found SPF lotions that are good enough that I can use an SPF and it gives my skin enough moisture. So it was interesting to see if this saying that it was a hydrating one did the same thing. You know, if it was able to provide enough hydration for me. Certainly when I put it on and I had all my makeup on, I thought, well, you know what? My skin doesn't feel tight because that would be the first sign. There are ones that I've used when my skin feels tight. And ironically, I think I told you that Avene SPF 50. Did I show it to you? I had to go and get it to show you. So it's this one here. This one, do you remember I said, firstly, when it goes on, it's, it feels so greasy. You can probably see that leaves a white cast and it feels so greasy that I just, no matter how much I rubbed it in, I knew that my foundation was gonna slide everywhere. But considering how greasy it is, my skin felt dry. As soon as I put my makeup on, I was like, my skin feels just tight, not dry, tight. And so I don't use this one anymore and I'm not going to use it. Even using an oil underneath, it still felt tight. So I didn't get that with this. However, I get it later on in the day and it is a lot later on in the day it was about nine hours later because I put down I put my I put this on at seven o'clock and the feeling of tightness was at about four o'clock that same day this morning I have used my EUK underneath which is what I did yesterday and I have to say just now it does feel a little bit tight I'm not sure why it would feel tight. I'm not sure why my, maybe my skin's getting more dehydrated, therefore this isn't providing enough hydration. Um, that's the only reason I can think of it, but my skin doesn't feel super moisturized right now. So um, if it's already feeling, it's not uncomfortable right now, it's just, I'm like, mm, it's ever so slightly tight. And so I feel like maybe by lunchtime, it will feel uncomfortable and I might want to take my makeup off or, I'll certainly be giving myself a spritz of my Body Shop Vitamin E spray. So I think what I'll try tomorrow is to use an oil underneath this. So something like the Borage oil or something like that. But I wouldn't particularly want to do that. I would want to use something like my EUK, Ethylated Vitamin C, um, or my vitamin C in silicone, and I wouldn't necessarily want to use a moisturizer underneath it. Um, but if you're happy with doing that, I think this will be absolutely fine. If, however, you're like me and you want to use one product as your moisturizer and SPF, and you have dry to very dry skin, this might not be enough on its own. And funny enough, there was, um, I looked at the reviews on the DCM site and there was a lady that said she was mixed race skin that was oily. She found this to be very, very good. And she said that she found there was no white cast. So that was really good. Um, but she said she wasn't sure it would be good for people with dry skin. Um, but interestingly, there was two other reviews that said there was too much residue and they found too much of a white cast which it just shows you, you know, it's horses for courses, isn't it? There's nothing in the ingredients that concerns me. Um, the pH is seven to 8.5, which is, the pH is generally a bit more alkaline for mineral sunscreens. And I actually looked at the pH just to see because I prefer it was nearer to seven, nearer to the sort of neutral mark, and it is. Um, I'm gonna see what I think by the time I get to the bottom of the tube and see how I get on using an oil underneath and maybe my skin just needs a bit of rehydration in general. And maybe if I do that, it will be fine using this. You know, I don't know. I'll see how I get on and I will report back to you either in my empties or I might do a dedicated video, but I would watch out in my empties for this because I am gonna use this continuously. And if I don't like it, it will be in my empties as an empty and fail, um, or it will just appear in my empties. And it should appear pretty quickly because you have to use quite a lot, as you saw, um, and it's only 50 mil, so it, it, it should be finished pretty quickly. There are some other things coming out in the range. There is an oil control SPF 30 coming out. I won't be getting that one because I don't need an oil control really nowadays, so I won't really be able to test that one. There's an invisible one at SPF 35 coming out. I probably will try that one just to report back to you guys. And then there's this one will be coming out in an SPF 50, which I will most likely try just to see how it compares. Um, I was gonna say it'd be good if they brought one out for dry skin, but I guess that's what this one is, being as it says it's got hydration properties in it. 
I'd be interested to know how many of you do what I do and try to just use one product with an SPF in it um, because I've always I'm saying that I'm the odd one out that I try to use one product but perhaps I'm behind the times in that I know that I was the odd one out in my 20s but you know that was 25 years ago <laughs> so maybe everybody is just using a moisturizer with SPF now as opposed to two separate products so let me know what you do do you use two products a moisturizer and then an SPF or do you use a moisturizer with SPF and that's it um, so I hope that that was useful to you and maybe will help you decide whether to purchase that or not or which one you would like to purchase um, makeup wise I've got on oh I don't even know what foundation I put on I think it was that Lancome Tent Adol Ultra again yes it was in 010 on my eyes I've got it's the makeup geek pigment in I've got it here because I did that last purple look and today's look I've done a tutorial on my patreon channel for I'm doing my favorite eye looks oh my goodness I, I keep doing this these little pots are great but I keep getting them done up so tight that I can't open them not that I need to open it it's makeup geek prism pigment you know how I love my pigments um it's beautiful isn't it it's a lovely sort of light peachy gold color hourglass dim infusion on my cheeks on my lips is this YSL pure couture lipstick it's so creamy I'm trying to not just use my usual lipsticks um that's everything thank you very much for watching and i'll speak to you soon